the Lord. Welcome back to Kingdom Makers TV. My name is Pastor Frank Opoku Amoko, and it's always a pleasure to come your way with the Word of God, with the teaching of the Word of God. God wants us to, oh, my thing is shaking. God wants us to take his word out there. God wants us to go into all the world, preaching the gospel, teaching the gospel, and discipling people and discipling the nation. So this is part of our effort to contribute to what many others are doing across the world. I'll be glad if you can invite somebody, if you can share with somebody. Today, I'm going to speak on the two kinds of pastors, two kinds of pastors, two kinds of pastors. And if you are able to invite maybe your pastor or your pastor friend or a minister or somebody who desires to be in the ministry, uh, I believe that this teaching will be helpful to them. It will be a blessing to them. So please, um, if you don't mind, share with somebody, share with a friend, invite others to watch with us today. Even if you can send it to them or how do they call it? Um, link them, is that, is that the word? Send them a notification. Tag them, I think that's the right word. If you can tag them, uh, they may not be ready right now to watch because they may be busy. But later on, it, once it stays in their, in, in their system, they'll be able to watch later on and uh, probably find it very helpful. All right, so I'm going to play uh, my promotional jingle again, and I'll ask you to please go ahead and share with somebody, and um, let's do this together. So I'm just doing this to buy time so you can invite somebody or use the time to invite somebody, link somebody, share with somebody, tag somebody, and let somebody be part, become part of the teaching video. I'm talking about two kinds of pastors, two kinds of pastors, okay. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Father, thank you for the opportunity you have given us to, to be with you, to work with you as co-laborers in your own vineyard. Thank you for calling us into the kingdom. Calling, thank you for the anointing you have given us, the ability, the grace that you have given us that we are able to do this, preach the gospel, teach the gospel, and bring others into the kingdom and disciple them for you. I pray for those who are with me right now, and I also pray for those who may listen to me later on. I pray that this teaching shall be a blessing to them, shall bring additional knowledge, insight, wisdom, uh, 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 understanding to them, that they shall be able to stand as your servants to do the work you have called them to do. I pray especially for young pastors and emerging pastors. I pray your grace upon them. They are going to carry the torch into the future from some of us. And I pray for them that they shall learn from you at your feet they shall grow in you and they shall increase in knowledge and understanding that they shall have the fortitude of ministry, the strength, the guts of, and the boldness and courage of, of, of going forward, taking steps to advance your kingdom, create new territories. I pray your grace. Baba, I pray for prosperity for them. That Lord, they shall not lack resources. Financial material resources shall never lack in their hands that they shall have all they need to do your work to the glory of your excellent name here on earth. Thank you, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Amen. All right. Once again, you're watching Kingdom Makers TV, and my name is Pastor Frank. We're talking about two kinds of pastors. And I'm going to draw uh, my lesson from the part of scripture that Jesus gave a parable about talents. So I'm going to read from the book of Matthew, chapter 25, from verse 14 to maybe 29, quite, quite long, but let's read it. Matthew, Matthew 25, from verse 14 to 29. 
for the kingdom of heaven is Jesus Christ is giving us an insight into the kingdom. When he came, he said the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And he died to give us the kingdom. And he wants us to know the kingdom, understand the kingdom, and know how to live in the kingdom, and how to operate in the kingdom. And so when you read the gospels, you, you get to understand how the kingdom looks like, how it's supposed to operate, how it's supposed to function, and how we are supposed to live in it and operate. So Jesus gave us a, lot, a whole lot of information about how the kingdom is supposed to work for us, and we also live in that kingdom and bear fruit in the kingdom. So the kingdom principles he gave us, he showed us how to marry, how to relate, how to forgive, how to love, how to preach, how to teach, how to uh, treat your workers, how to treat your bosses, how to relate to your country, your lead, a whole lot of things about the kingdom. So whatever goes on in the natural world, in the kingdoms of this world, Jesus gave us their version in his kingdom. All right. So this is one of the examples of how the kingdom works that Jesus gave us. Matthew 25, 14 again. For the kingdom of God is like a man traveling for the kingdom of God, for the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. And to one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to each according to his own ability. And immediately he went on a journey. Then he who had received the five talents went and traded with them and made, an, made another five talents. Now listen to this carefully, verse 16. Then he who had received the five talents went and traded with them and made another five talents. And likewise, he who had received two gained two more also. But he who had received one went and dug in the ground and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants came back and settled accounts with them. So he who had received five talents came and brought five other talents, saying, Lord, you delivered to me five talents. Look, I have gained five more talents beside them. His Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things. And the Lord called five a few wow you were faithful over a few things i'll make you ruler over many things give him a few he's giving him many things now enter into the joy of the lord verse 22 he who if you just join me i'm reading from the book of matthew chapter 25 i'm in verse 22 now he who also had received two talents came and said lord you delivered to me two talents look i have gained two more talent beside them. His Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I'll make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Then he who had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you have not sown. Wow. And gathering where you have not scattered seed. And I was afraid and I went and hid your talent in the ground. There you have what is yours. But his Lord answered and said to him, you wicked and lazy servant, you knew that I reap where I have not sown. Is that all you have left for me? And I gather where I have not scattered all the time you have been with me. Is that the only thing you learned from me as your leader? Wow. So you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers, and at my coming, I would have received back my own with interest. Therefore, take the talent from him and give it to him who has 10 talents. Verse 29, for to everyone who has, more will be given. To everyone who has, more will be given. And he will have abundance. But from him who does not have, even what he has 
will be taken from him. Pretty long, but I believe you know this already, this scripture already. I'm talking about two kinds of pastors. This is how I describe the two kinds of pastors. And uh, this will be very beneficial, especially to pastors who, uh, who plant their own churches or are sent by their organizations to go plant churches under the umbrella of the organization. Two kinds of pastors. It also applies for church leaders who are put in charge of church departments, church committees, uh, church structures, or church systems. And a leader who is put in charge of, let's say, the protocol department or the accounting department or the music department or the children's department in the church. It also applies to those who have been given the responsibility of by God to plant their own churches or by God to plant churches under the bigger umbrella of their organization. This applies to everyone who has been given this opportunity. And by extension, even in the secular world, you, you, if you're a manager, you have been given responsibility, you to head a department. It, the principles of the kingdom applies to everyone. But I'm focusing on pastors in particular, but the principles apply to everyone. Two kinds of pastors. This is how I describe the two kinds of pastors. I call one category of pastors, one, the first group, I call them pastor leaders. And the second group, let me, let me rather turn it. The first group, I call them pastor managers. And the second group, I call them pastor, pastor leaders. Please listen to me carefully because it's going to be helpful to you. This is my description of the two kinds of pastors. The first group, the first kind of pastors, or the first category of pastors, I call them pastor managers. And the second category of pastors, I call them pastor leaders. Somebody else may categorize them differently, but this is based on my understanding. Pastor managers versus pastor leaders. Who are pastor managers? A pastor manager, especially let me use this example, a pastor manager, you can know the difference between a pastor manager and a pastor leader with this, uh, by this illustration. Let's say a young pastor or any pastor, an old pastor, whatever, is serving under a bigger umbrella. Let's say Methodist church or Anglican church or Episcopal church or Catholic church or um, Pentecostal Assemblies of God or Church of Pentecost or um, church of God in Christ or Church of God, whatever. And then you are sent out, you are ordained and sent out, even not ordained, you are sent out to go and plant a new church or oversee, take over and oversee an existing church. So you are sent out. Your job is to preach, teach, lead the church, build the church, and live the church and let the church grow and not just grow, but also multiply. Now, when a pastor is only a pastor leader, he goes there and he takes over the church and uh, he's able to preach, able to teach, able to care for the flock, able to organize some things, care for the flock and keep the church good. The church is able to solve problems, counsel the people, marry them, bury them, name them, their children, and, and visit them, encourage them, and preach. And he's doing the work of a pastor. He's caring, very caring. He's able to connect with the people, relate to them, and connect with them. And that's what the, and the church is happy to have that pastor. Most of the time, he's so caring and so there for the people that not that many troubles arise. And even if they are right, he knows how to care for the flock and love them and visit them and encourage them. That's a good pastor, a good shepherd. But it is not enough to just be a good pastor, a good shepherd in this sense. When you stay at this level, you are only ma a manager. And most times or sometimes such pastors, they are unable to go beyond the level that they, 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 they the level that they got the church at. They may be able to add a few, have his leaders around them, and um, good, fine. 
Enough money comes in to pay salary, pay the staff, do this and do that. Fine. But that is the level he gets to, and that's it. He's content. He's happy. He's happy that even if the church is not growing that, that much, he's not losing people. He's happy. Even if the money, the finances is not growing that much, there's enough coming in to take care of the, the work and himself and the work and the staff. He's happy. He's able to add a few structures to it, the children's service, build this and that sort of thing, and that is good. He's happy. Good shepherd, good manager. He's managing what has been given to him, taking care of what, have been, what has been good, given to him. But sometimes when certain requirements come or what certain needs arise, is unable to rise to that occasion. For instance, if he's able, he's asked to maybe multiply the church, raise more leaders, and send them out and plant more churches, and build capacity of, of his recruit, I mean, design people in the congregation who are called into various segments of their own lives in the secular or of their own life in ministry in the church or in the kingdom, he's found wanting. Talk about leadership training. He doesn't know what leadership training is. Talk about leadership development. Oh, what is that? Uh, well, we've been having quarterly meetings. We've been having, um, I, I met the ushers the other time. I met the music. So uh, that's what, we, we, I, meet, I meet my leaders. But that is the level that pastor will remain. The church will be there. The church will not, like everybody would not, people will leave, but not so much. But he's able to care for the people. One thing that people talk about is that our pastor is a good man. Our pastor is a good woman. Our pastor is caring. Our pastor is loving. Our pastor is a visit. Our pastor is an encourager. Our pastor is always there for us. Our pastor visits us. Our pastor cares for us. And they talk about this, 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 apple, this, this good attribute, and that's good. That's good. But there's a second category of pastors. This first category is the pastor manager, able to manage what has been given to him. And for five years, eight years, 10 years, so able to keep it. And that's sort of thing. Now, the building that was given to him, able to maintain it, that sort of thing, but nothing about maybe building new structures or extending it in a phenomenal way, no. And there are people in the church who, young people in the church who need to marry, who need to uh, uh, find career development, career path, educate themselves, that sort of thing. He's not much into that. He cares for them, he loves them, but he's not able to talk, see this young man and say, young man, you have been doing this, 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 this farming job for that long. Um, I've been looking at you, I've been talking to you, I've been observing you, you've got potential to be a great man beyond this. So I want to encourage you, Apply for that college. I saw that, uh, uh, that, that course at the university or the polytechnic or in that, in that company. Apply for it and I'll endorse you. Apply for it and, and go for the interview because I see you, you are capable of doing that. So really me? Yes, you can do it. Apply for it. I'll endorse you. I'll pay. I'll even let the check pay or myself pay the deposit for you. Application fee for you. Go, go and do it. And the young man said, really? I did, I, can I do it? Yes, you can do it. The young man applies, goes, and after five years, the young man, the young man, the young man comes and is bigger than what he used to be, greater than what he used to be. That pastor manager is still unable to do much of this. Maybe one or two, but not much of this. And sometimes the pastor manager will complain about that which is not there. There's no money. They want you to plant new churches, there's no money. Bring the money. They want you to um, do some training or conference, there's no money. They wanted to uh, add to some structures and that sort of thing. There's no money. And then, oh, there's no money. If it, okay, if you don't bring the money, then I cannot do it. If headquarters don't bring the money, then I can't do it. If this person will not bring, then I cannot do it. But he's caring for the church. He's a good shepherd. He says he's a good man. He's a good woman. That's a pastor manager. I can go on and on and on to describe a pastor manager. But let me switch to the pastor leader. The pastor leader is different from the pastor manager. He has everything the pastor manager has. Plus, the pastor leader has everything that the pastor manager has. Plus, more. 
What is the plus? What is the more? The plus is that the plaster manager goes to a place, either he's planting his own church, or he's taking over a, a new church, or he's been giving a few people to start a church with, and he goes there, there may be no meeting place, there may be no equipment, the people may be few, maybe not willing to give and not committed. They may be having financial challenges, maybe his accommodation is not even there. But he accepts the challenge. And the Bible says, where two or three are gathered. Okay, give me this mountain, I'll take it, the killer spirit. The pastor leader does not look at the problem and the lack and the things that are not there, but he looks at the opportunity. The pastor manager looks at what is there as the opportunity. The pastor leader may take that and thank God, but he will say, even if there is nothing there, once you have given me the mandate, the opportunity to go and plant a church, to go and, and lead this church, to go and build this church, and to build this congregation, I am able to do it. If you bring me money, better, I'll be happy. But if there's no money, I will let these two hands of mine create the wealth and distribute the wealth and enjoy the wealth also and expand the wealth with the wealth. Even if there are no people, I am going to go into the highways and byways and streets and call them in. Even if the people in the church are, are, are reluctant, they are not attending, they are not punctual, they are not attending, so they are not giving their tithes and their offerings, they are not committed, they, are, they have attitudes, no problem. The pastor manager will say, uh, the church you gave me, the people are not committed. The church you gave me, it's in a the, in the, in the, in the small town. The church you asked me to go and plan, it's in a, a certain part of the city or the town that nobody goes there. It's the, 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 the classroom, the meeting place is close to a, a garbage dump and the, because the people are not coming. So um, that's why the people are not, the church don't grow. The pastor manager will see the same problem. The church is not the backside of, of town where nobody wants to go or out of town. The church is planted but with just two or three or four or eight people. The church is planted by people, is filled with people who are reluctant, who are unemployed, who are complaining, who don't give their tithe, they don't give offering, they don't, they don't want to come for prayer meetings, they don't come to service, they come late and say, no problem. The pastor leader looks at them and says, in spite of the mess, this is an opportunity. Hmm. That is a pastor leader. A pastor leader sees the problem as an opportunity. If headquarters bring resources, praise God. If headquarters does not bring resources, praise the Lord. I will get it done because God has called me. I will pray through. I will pray through. I have, I have what it takes by the grace of God. And you get something done. That is a pastor leader. What the pastor manager shall complain about the pastor leader shall celebrate about what the pastor manager shall be bogged down by, shall be discouraged and depressed by, the pastor leader shall be encouraged and activated by. That's the difference between these kind of pastors. And over the years that I've been pastoring, I've seen these two categories of pastors all over the place. If the pastor manager is his own self planting church, that is his own quote unquote own owner church. That is, if he, he plants his own church and is only a pastor manager, he'll be one of the most frustrated pastors ever. If you plant your own church and you're only a pastor manager, <laughs> you're almost not going nowhere. You better find a big organization and stay under. But if a pastor is also a pastor manager and he works in a big organization, or he lose for his, his salary, his allowances, and, uh, and, and provision of give me this, give me that, bring this. If you don't bring it, I cannot do this. And, I, and complain about everything. That's the pastor manager. But the pastor leader, hey, give him three people, give him 20 people, give him 100 people in an old building at the backside of town. He will turn it around. Hallelujah. I like the spirit. Of pastor leaders. I think I have I have a lot of that by God's grace. I live here in America. 
If God should say, if God should say, Frank, I want you to go back to Ghana or go to Uganda or go to Rwanda. Or let's not go to Ghana because I know the Ghana cities and towns. Go to Ghana and don't go to Accra, the capital. Go, don't, don't go to any capital city. Go to some small town. And I know it's God. How? Oh, How? Oh, I wouldn't say I'm in America, I have my salary. No, if it's God, and it's a small town with two people, three people, or no people, and God said go, me, oh my God. <laughs> I see that as an opportunity of God and the grace he has given me and these two hands of mine and this mouth and heart shall get it done. Shall go and get one person, two people, and put grace into them, put passion into them, teach them, train them, encourage them, motivate them, deal with them, and train them with capacity to do the work. Hallelujah. That is pastor leader. It doesn't mean you, you, you have to necessarily grow, you have to be a mega. No, Jesus, Jesus was a pastor leader, but he had only 12. If a pastor has a leadership capacity, what we bring behind him after he's gone, or after a year or two or three or 20 or years, you look behind him, you may not necessarily see maybe a big church, but you see a church full of people with leadership. He has built capacity. People who were virtually nothing in the church, nobody in the church when they came in, but they stayed with him for five years, 10 years, 20 years, and the people have become giants in the Lord, giants in their own secular capacity or ministry capacity or whatever. He has the capacity as a pastor leader to turn around. Why? Because he brings perspective. A pastor manager is unable to bring new perspectives. He works what he has been given and what he has been told, and that's all. He can bring new perspective into the work. If there are challenges and problems, he's unable to see them from various angles and see, okay, this is the problem. Let's look at it from this angle or that angle and this angle. As you look at me, you see my, if I turn this way and look at me, you see me at a differently, isn't it? If I turn my back, that is different perspective of the same me. A pastor manager will just look at my face and say, his face like this, and that's all I know. His face, and his face is this, and that. But a pastor leader will look, will look, find a way to look at the back side, the front side, the, in, the, the back, the uh, upside, the, and eventually make a conclusion and use that to drive the work. That is a pastor manager. There are two kinds of pastors. That's a pastor leader. There are two kinds of pastors. Pastor managers, pastor leaders. The question to you, listening to me, young pastor or emerging pastor, which of these categories are you? I've, 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 I've worked under uh, big organizations where you see past, some past, they're always complaining. They've been given opportunity and a church, um, uh, they, their, their salary is paid, their, their meeting place is paid for, their accommodation is paid for, but they complain, salary is not, uh, not enough, the accommodation is not enough, and uh, this is not enough, you know, they have not been given a car, even the car they bought is an old car, and they're always complaining, always complaining, always complaining. These are pastor managers. They're thinking about their retirement, their allowance and their benefits. That is good. But a pastor leader will look beyond that. That with that old car, at least he has a car. Old car, he's able to bicycle, motor, uh, and oh, oh my God, I have one. I'm going to go forward with it. And I'm going to use it to build the church, turn the work around, and create wealth. And that wealth will give me a new car. By these two hands, Paul said, these two hands of mine have provided for my necessity. The pastor manager will never use his, two, his own two hands. What is given to him, what do, you, what do you use? If there's none, nothing happens. But the pastor leader, give him one talent. Give him five talents, you multiply it. Give him two talents, you multiply it. Uh, sorry. The pastor leader, give him five talents, he'll multiply it. Give him two, he'll multiply it. He will work with it and multiply it. But the pastor manager, you gave me only one. You look at that. You gave these people five. You, these people, you put them in the city. You transfer them to the city. Me alone, you transfer me to the, to, to the village or to the small town. These people, you gave them a church that they have a, a big building and they, they had a car. Yeah, me, when you, when you transfer me, I don't have a car. I don't have a house. I live in the village. The people are not even employed. The people are not even coming to church. And you transfer me there. That, what a wicked master. <laughs> oh, my God. Pastor. Managers. Pastor managers are unable to bring new perspective. They are unable to take new territories. 
They are unable to create new paradigms. They are unable to expand the terrain. They are unable to broaden the scope. And if you are a young pastor serving under a pastor manager, if God doesn't take care, you remain at your level as an MC, as an intercessory leader, as an ushers leader, as an associate pastor forever. They don't have any plans for you. No plans to develop you that one day you shall also be sent to go and expand the kingdom. They don't have any plans. If you sit under, if you're a young pastor and you sit under a pastor who is only a pastor manager and God doesn't help you, you will die with your talent and your capacity and your ability. But if God gives you opportunity to serve under a pastor leader, oh, before you realize it, he he designs a call upon your life. You may not even realize it, but he says, you are, I see a sense of call, go and pray about it. And if you don't believe it, you start giving your assignment over a period of time until you discover that no, you're able to do, you're able to do, you're able to do, you're able to do that. And then gradually you grow. Before you realize he has developed, you may be recommended to go to Bible school or train you himself. And before you realize over time, he has developed you and said, now I'm going to ask you to go and plant a church in that town, in that city or that part of town or that, that area. And um, we, we don't have that much money, but we give you this, this little resource that we can give you. You can do it. Go and do it. And before I realize, this young pastor goes out there, and within a short time, wow, he's standing on his own two feet. Under the pastor leader, new potentials are discovered. New talents are discovered. Under a pastor leader, new abilities are dis- designed, discovered, recruited, developed, and sent out to multiply the kingdom. But under a pastor leader, you will remain there forever. So you were a music director for years, you were a singer for years, you were this for years, that is the end of you. You have the potential, but he doesn't, he hasn't even seen it, he doesn't mean care because that is not part of his agenda. His agenda is to keep the house nice, house nice, salary paid, the congregation nice, that's all. That's all. And even if he's going to build, everything is him, him in the church, him. But a pastor leader like Jesus, who caught tax collectors and fishermen and, and, and this and that, and, and, and who don't even believe in himself, put confidence in them, train them, develop them, and, and build their capacity and said, now I'm out. Go and do the work. And they were able to do it. That is under a pastor leader. But the pastor manager, oh, I've seen it several times. They may have, let's say, five young people under them who have got potential, who have got calling, who desire to rise up in ministry, but their, their pastor, manager, senior pastor, who's the only a manager, hasn't even seen their potential. But if you have seen their potential, you want them to be intercessors, leaders, authors, leaders, uh, accounting leaders, uh, administrative leaders, uh, uh, protocol leaders, and that's all he has got for them. But he hasn't got no plans to recruit these people, di- discover them, recruit them, encourage them, motivate them, grow them up, build their capacity, train them, and over time, send them out to go and expand the kingdom. The pastor manager has no such agenda, no vision, no drive, no direction concerning that. And when young pastors serve under such pastor managers, they struggle. And when they want to leave, they, they want to even abuse them. But under pastor leaders, new direction comes, new perspectives comes, new insight comes. New expansion comes. New territories are taken. New abilities are built. New potentials are built out. New capacities are developed. People who are nothing, even in the secular world, are made to become something because the pastor leader saw something in them and said, you can be a manager one day. You can be a politician. I see you can be a marketing guru. You can be a teacher, a lecturer, a professor. You can be a marketer who can set up your own business. Me, I I don't have money. You will have the money. Let's start. In the hands of the pastor leader, people become. In the hands, under the covering, under the leadership, under the ministry, at the feet of pastor leaders, people become. And the church become, not just more in number, but multiplies. But under a pastor manager, people hardly become. Sometimes they become frustrated. If you want to become something, so you want to become better than mine, you want to become better than me, then they whip you down. If you go and tell them, oh, I believe God wants me to uh, become a pastor one, to become a pastor one, you are only a singer, be real, sing. And you, they just discourage you. A pastor manager 
is a master discourager. They will discourage you. When you sense a passion to try something, to do something, they will discourage you. But a pastor can say, oh, really? Okay, let me pray with you. And let's trust God. Okay, start. He knows you may make mistakes, but he knows that making mistakes is part of personal leadership development uh, 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 plan. So he let you make your mistake by he's, uh, he's covering you, he's encouraging you. He'll call and say, you made a mistake. Okay, you can do it this way. And before you realize that which you thought was not you comes out. That is a pastor leader in whose hands things flourish and multiply. And a pastor manager, things may flourish, but hardly multiply. That's the difference between these two categories of pastors. And I believe that in this time, at this time, we need more of pastor leaders. And I pray for church organizations, church denominations. Many a time, church denominations have a lot of pastor managers. The churches are built for them. They send out, they, they go there, they meet 200 people, 100 people, 500 people, and they, they're fine. They're able to get their salaries paid. They have a car. They have their, their accommodation paid for, that sort of thing. And they're able to travel and they dress nice. And the church love them and they have their birthday celebration, church appreciation, and this, and, and they have their conference. That, that's fine. But for the kingdom to advance, we need more than that. We need passionate, aggressive, bold territory takers. Bold. Capacity builders, bold recruiters who shall see new potential out of people who appear to be nothing and call them on and encourage them and motivate them and develop them and grow them and send them out. That is what Jesus did. Pastor leadership is needed. Else, if we only have pastor managers, we only manage what we have and keep what we have and, and, and oversee what we have and care for what we have, but we can never multiply. Anytime there's a problem somewhere, there's nobody to fall on who can go and turn it around because everybody is managing. May God give us pastor leaders. May God raise for us pastor leaders. Oh, sometimes I, I, I wish I could, by nature, I don't want to be bogged down pastoring, just sitting in one place. No, 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 I'm a capacity builder. I'm a capacity builder. Like Paul did, he went there, plant a church out of nothing, raise leaders, build their capacity, sell leaders over them, oversee it, move. I mean, go to various places and do it. I enjoy it. Anytime I meet two or three or four people and I teach them and I build their capacity, that is my excitement. That is my joy. But that's me. Not everybody should be like me or everybody is like me, but that's me. When I meet people and I teach them, so I don't care about crowds. But when I meet two or three and we sit down or 10 people or 50, whatever number, and my job is to teach them to build their leadership capacity, to develop them, to build them, to increase them, to add value to them, to make them stand as leaders. That is my joy. That is my excitement. I am a capacity builder. I enjoy two teaching. And I don't care where it is. Like I said, take me to a village. Take me to Kaswa. Take me to Kumburugu. Take me to, so, and say, Go and meet this way and develop them, develop their capacity, build them. And very soon, I'll be, when this COVID thing is over, I'll be traveling a lot, building, teaching to build capacity. Build, especially emerging person, teaching to build their capacity, train them, build their capacity, build their capacity, build their capacity so that they can expand. They themselves shall expand on the inside, then they shall expand on the outside and do the same thing with others. Multiply, raise others and multiply others also so the kingdom shall multiply. We need pastor leaders in our time. Too many pastor managers who complain about salary and lack of accommodation and lack of instruments. Lack of, I don't have instruments. I don't have microphone. And they, they, there's no pulpit. And they, they check, we don't have a carpet. And they, they check, and they check, and they make is bad. And yes, we know that. We know that. Yes. But that's where God has given you the calling, the anointing, and these two hands of you in ministry to turn it around. And the pastor leader shall take it. And by God's grace, with a lot of prayer and hard work, turn it around. And the master shall say, Oh, thou great and faithful servant. I gave you little, but you have multiplied it. Therefore, I'm going to give you more. I'm going to increase you more. But the one who said, Oh, you complain about it, I don't have this. I complain about the, the leader. The leader is this, the leader is wicked and bad and this and that sort of thing. Is that all, all the years you sat under your, under your leader? Is that all you learned under, from your leader that he was wicked? That he, he reaped where he has Is that all the virtues you learned about your leader? 
but other people were under the same leader. How come they didn't focus on the, the master being a cheater, a deceiver, or whatever, but they learned principles for themselves that will make them expand and grow? How can you learn the negative? Some people under the same umbrella learn positive. It's personal attitude. If you have got personal leadership, instincts and capacity and drive and mindset, you will learn from even not everything, even from nothing. But if you don't have a pastor leader mentality and just a pastor manager, you look at, oh, this is, a, this is the problem. They go complain about this. That's what, no, no. That is why when God gave David opportunity to go fight Goliath, King Saul said, take my armor. I said, I tried it. He doesn't fit. Let him go what I have. And with what he had, he was, he was able to turn the story, change the story, change the national conversation. That is a pastor leader. He's able to change the conversation from negative to positive, turn things around. When everybody's afraid, everybody says, this church is not going to work. This church is a problem. This person, he's able to say, yeah, give me this mountain. Kill up spirit. That's a pastor leader. The pastor manager will say, you know, Ken, I'm old. At least as, as an old man, what can I do? I'm ready for retirement. Let the young people do it. I cannot, I cannot. We need pastor, pastor leaders today. And if you have a pastor who God has led to start your own church, so to speak, you better learn to develop your personal leadership instincts, personal leadership capacity, else you die. Because there's nobody you, to complain about. There's no leader, overseer, or superintendent to complain about. There's no headquarters to complain about or to co complain against. Now you are, you are your own founder, superintendent, overseer, and headquarters. Are you going to complain against yourself or against God? You better go to God and learn how to be a pastor leader. And next time I'll talk about how to become a pastor leader, how to grow from pastor manager to pastor leader. I'll teach on that. I believe the letter I've shared today has given you some insight. Not fully, but I'm sure it has given an idea about whether you, as a pastor, you are operating as a pastor manager or as a pastor leader. Pastor managers usually in their church serve as chaplains. Pastor managers usually they operate like chaplains. They care for the people. They are there for them. That's what they love them, visit them. But that's about all. But pastor leaders, they are chaplains plus capacity builders. Chaplains plus, chaplains is a caring one, a shepherding one. But plus that, they develop potentials, they recruit potentials, they develop potentials, they expand capacity, they expand territory, and they multiply people, multiply leaders, and multiply the work. I was talking to a pastor the other time, and he said he was sent to by his organization to a certain church somewhere, another city. And it was a problem, church, that sort of thing. But he went there and went to not big congregation, small size, but he went to build them and buy land and they the build. And the build was so big. Their, their bishop came over to visit and said, Hey, are you here building this building? He said, Yeah. I said, how, how? They asked him, How many are, are, are your members? He mentioned, How much is your tithe? He mentioned, How much is your offering? He mentioned, How much is your annual check income, um, 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 monthly income? He mentioned it. And he said, And you're able to do this? Did you take a bank loan? He said, No bank loan. He said, How are you able to do it? The bishop was surprised. And how are you able to do it? He said, well, by grace, I motivate the people and the people, some people that you think don't have, they're able to give and they're blessing and they've got is helping the blessing them too. So, wow, that is a church in the hands of a pastor leader. He left there, another pastor went to take over. <laughs> Salary, ensure his paid. But the building that was got into the roof says, 10 years before they were able to start the roofing. You are this church. This pastor was there. No land, nothing. He was able to buy land and start developing. Pastor leader, in the hands of a pastor leader, things multiply. In the hands of a pastor manager, things may not be lost, but they remain almost the same. May God give the body of Christ. May God give our churches. May God give senior pastors. May God give overseers and superintendents. May God give us pastor leaders. May God raise in the kingdom today pastor leaders who are not just thinking about themselves, but are thinking about how to expand the, uh, the terrain of the kingdom, how to raise people and encourage them and multiply and bless them and build with them and let them expand. May God raise for us people like that in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right. I'll, I'll end here today. We we'll continue another time. This
as Pastor Frank of Okomako is watching Kingdom Makers TV. I'll go to your comments, and then if I need to respond to anything, I will. But God bless you. Keep watching Kingdom Makers TV because we are here to add to your life to build your capacity in Jesus' name. Thank you.